Hey, Danny, this isn't so much of a question. Just wanted to kind of open up to hear your thoughts on uh, everything that you've been seeing and hearing the last couple of days. I mean, obviously, it's disheartening. Uh, the things that are still going on in the world, you would think that people would be more aware of what the, what the hell's going on around them and not take the actions they're still taking that we've seen in the, the near, I guess, past. Um, you know, we're still looking for justice for Breonna Taylor. Obviously, George Floyd is not somebody we've ever forgotten. And now we have Jacob Blake, um, another incident where, you know, people are quick to take ridiculous action, um, you know, without any sensitivity of what the hell's going on around them. Um, so, you know, things have taken us back a little bit. You know, we're human too. Um, you know, we, we follow suit with Milwaukee. We back them. Uh, they, they felt the need to, to sit out. And, you know, there's some of the guys that, that felt strongly about it. And I, I think it was a good thing. Um, even though we didn't have, a, a, say, an ideal situation of when it happened or a plan, but we needed time to talk as a, as a unit, as a group. Even though we compete every day with each other, we have a lot of pride. We love this game. We want to win. And we look at each other as the enemy sometimes. We are in this together. A lot of us have the same communities, grow up in the same type of areas. Um, so playing every other day, we don't have time to actually communicate. And the fact that we're competing against each other, you know, we're kind of in that mode where we're just not can communicate with anybody but our team. Um, so, you know, the last couple of days have given us a, a chance and a break to actually figure some things out, see what we want to do, refocus, um, you know, take a breather and, you know, figure out what the next plan of action is. And we have some good things in the works. Obviously, it's not going to get done overnight, but um, we are demanding some good things. And I think some great things are happening. And it's good to have our owners have our back and say that they gave us their word that they're going to have our back and help us, you know, with the, the, the main things we have on the list that we want to get done. And just curious if there's another, if there's any takeaway, uh, Danny, just from, from all of those times discussing with your fellow teammates, with the rest of the guys in the league, uh, what's, what's the thing that you're, you think has changed uh, maybe from where things were before all these meetings two days ago? I mean, there's a lot of emotions, man, in the last couple of days. Obviously, you guys have heard about some of the meetings. I don't know how all this stuff gets out so fast. Um, and not all of it's correct information, but, you know, you guys get the gist of it. Some teams are going back and forth. Some teams are in and out. Some teams are, you know, it's, there's a lot of tension in this bubble. We're here without our families. We've been here for two months locked up um, in a small area. I wouldn't say, shouldn't say locked up, but we're confined to a very, you know, small radius of things. Um, you know, guys get a little antsy, guys get a little tense, emotional. And, um, you know, we had some talks, but we took a day or two. They're trying to make, you know, very big decisions within a small amount of time, which is tough to do. Um, but luckily, so we took a day or so, got back to the drawing board, figured it out, got everybody on board and, um, and on the same page and, and figured out, you know, what's the, the, the best way to attack this for the bigger picture. Um, and, you know, we said so we got some great things lined up. I know you guys have seen the press release um, and some of the things that we want to get done. I think the biggest thing, um, because voting suppression is such a real thing, we want all our arenas opened up to make them voting polls uh, when November comes. Um, and a lot of, you know, the owners said they were already in the works of doing that already. So that was a good sign. But if we can get that done soon, I think that's a huge win. Um, and obviously we're going to get a board of, you know, like I said, a coalition board to where we can have people oversee these things. When things happen like this, can take action right away and people working for us. But we don't have to keep stopping. We don't have to see, you know, have to make calls. Obviously, Milwaukee happened in their backyard, and we said we're backing them, but it's going to happen again, um, unfortunately. Uh, so when it does happen, we don't have to keep stopping play. Um, or if it happens in Portland or if it happens in Orlando or, you know, Utah, where they feel a certain way and have to stop playing again, we have some type of board or some ter certain types of people working for us where they can, you know, make calls and get some certain things and some, some action done quickly to where, you know, some justice where we feel a little bit more comfortable about certain situations where we don't have to feel like we're the ones that have to save the world and, you know, come up with a plan to figure it out. Um, but like I said, a lot of emotional days, man. We, we come back here, we'll be back to playing or working out and practicing, trying to get back in that mode. Um, but it's hard to do both and juggle it all at the same time when we have games every other day. Um, hopefully the schedule will change a little bit too so that we can have time to discuss it and also remember why we're here, the bigger picture. Uh, what wasn't basketball. You know, it was 
you know, trying to help and make our country better for our people and for our communities. Hey, Danny, it's, it's Dave. Um, two questions. One, you mentioned there was some stuff that's out there that wasn't true. I wanted to see if you wanted to clear up any inaccuracies. And then secondly, can you take us back to Wednesday night when you guys left the meeting as a team um, and what the sentiment was and then whether you thought that we would be playing basketball again in the bubble? Well, I mean, I don't know what you guys have heard. I've heard many different stories of, you know, LeBron said this, LeBron did that, uh, so-and-so said this, so-and-so said that, um, which is, I think, some of, most of it was untrue. Um, so I don't know what you heard, what you think is true or not. I said everybody has different opinions, uh, but the meetings went as simple as, you know, we had our own team meetings before the meeting. We discussed it, uh, how our approach was. We were kind of with the majority of what, you know, guys wanted to do when we got in the meeting. Guys had decisions, teams made votes. Uh, we had a discussion about it. Things got heated. It was a long meeting, about three hours almost. I think guys just needed a break. Um, so at that point, guys were just ready to get out of there. Once things kind of got heated, you know, we just um, went to go take a food break, circled back, went back in there. Uh, I went back in the meeting after we ate and used the bathroom um, and then talked to them again. So we'll circle back in the next morning at 11 a.m. And they came to our food room. We talked to them again. We had, some, we had a couple meetings. It's not something that was going to happen overnight. We knew that. Um, and Bron knew that. So... For them to think that we're going to get everything done that night um, was unrealistic, I think. But it wasn't as crazy as everybody made it seem. Details aren't as drastic. Um, the things you've heard that certain people have said that were negative weren't like that. Um, but there were some things said. Some people felt that there was some disrespect going on. And it was, it was checked, but nothing crazy. So I said, I don't know what you guys have heard. Tanya? Um, how did you see LeBron's mentality shift from Wednesday night into Thursday morning? What's today? Today's Friday. <laughs> Yesterday was Thursday morning. Okay. Wednesday was the night that the Bucks <laughs> okay. decided not to. Um, well, sh we went from about to play a game at 9 p.m. to waking up in the middle of a nap. You know, people banging on our doors saying we have an emergency meeting. Waking up in the middle of a nap not knowing what the hell's going on saying we're probably not going to play and that we're not going to play. You know, we're back in Milwaukee. We have another meeting tonight at 8, and we were woken up at like 4, 4, 4 or 5 o'clock. Um, so from then, you know, I mean, we said we're trying to talk as a team, figure out our route, and then obviously we have a lot of veterans on our team, so if things were to shut down, I feel, I feel like a lot of our guys would be okay, but we don't think it would be fair for the younger guys, the younger generation. Um, so we want to take all those things in consideration. We want to take care of those guys that are coming after us. Um, so we were waiting to see what the majority was saying. We wasn't trying to make a decision for the whole league. Um, but once we got in there, you know, we knew um, we were hearing certain things, different things. But um, like I said, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I, I don't want to reveal all the information. Like I said, that's, that's private matter. But even though y'all going to get it anyway, y'all might as well be in the, move, in the meeting room. Somebody's uh, alarm asleep. Um, y'all are pretty much getting the information. Y'all might as well be in there. But um, you can see energy shifting with different teams. Certain teams were for it, certain teams weren't. Certain teams were saying they weren't for it, and then the next year they changed their mind. It went back and forth with different parties. Um, but you could tell he was kind of in a place where he was fighting with his mind and his heart. Where, you know, his heart was in one place, his mind is another. And um, you, know, you could just tell that the bubble's getting not just to him, but to everybody. Um, you know, we, we came, we talked as a team, as a group. And he's our leader. He, he made a decision uh, for us, and we were behind it regardless of what that was because most of us, we were talking to him about it and let him know. Um, so his decision was what it was. We talked about it again. We you know, said talk to other teams and then went from there. I'm not going to tell you what the decision was. Um, y'all hear what y'all hear, but he made a decision, and then you know, we talk it out. We talk it out as a group, and we, you know, we move forward. But um, We were always with the majority most of the time. It wasn't like we were trying to make a decision for the league. Well, all right. Everybody else said yes. We're saying no. That's not. That's not how it was. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what y'all heard or what what is going around, but um, yeah, it wasn't like that. So, I mean, it is what it is. You could ask him when you talk to him if he wants to reveal what his decision was, or his mo his thoughts process, or what his energy or how his heart and mind was shifting. But we're all in that same place. It was no different from anybody. You know, my mind was in one place, my heart's in another. We know, you know, we're tired of being in here. We want our families here, but our families are right here. Some of them are already quarantined right outside the bubble, so they're on their way in here. Some of them are about to fly here in a couple of days. Um, so we know that's going to make things better for us, but 
you know, we're all caught in two different places and trying to make a decision within five or six hours of something we woke up to, you know, in the middle of the day when we were planning to play a game. You're not going to make a good, great decision. Kyle? Yeah, um, Danny, to, to build off of what you just said there, mm -hmm. um, how tough was it to um, arrange sort of a platform to present to owners of this is what we want to see in, in that short amount of time when you were kind of caught off guard by what the Bucks did? And then what, were they receptive and was there anything you felt was sort of left on the table that the players did want but was not included in the final commitments? Um, they were very receptive. I don't think it would took that long. It just took some time. You know, it took for us to take a little break. I mean, obviously, the last couple of days, not a lot of guys didn't get much sleep, but we can get, we put our heads together. We all have our people. We all talk to our people. I have my guys. I talk to my guys from the green room. And a lot of them understand politics better. We're not politicians at the end of the day. And we said it's not our job to really save the world, even though we're trying to. We're trying to do our best. We know we're, we're in the forefront. We're leading. Whatever we do, people are following suit. So we're trying our best to be both, even though we're not politicians. Um, so we talk to our people, we, you know, get our heads together, figure out what ideas are good, uh, what kind of changes we need, what can we get done now, what could we get done in the next you know, week or so. Um, you know, we're trying to get a win now, and um, you know, we come back to the table and talk to each other. Uh, so I said, I said, I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but I'm, I don't think I'm a dummy, but I said, I have help. We all have help. Um, so with our help from our people and help from uh, the Players Association, it wasn't that hard to get some of those things said and put on a, on, a, on, a, on a list. They had a list of things before we went down there. But before we went in that meeting room that morning, I told them, you know, this is some of the things that we brought to the table that we feel, feel like we can get done now for us to be like, okay, we'll go back to playing, but we need this done now. Uh, once we got on the, the call, you know, they were very receptive to everything that we you know, pitched, everything that we put down on the list. And there's still more things. I'm sure they're going to continue to have ideas. We're still going to push, but it starts with the smallest steps. And I said voting is the biggest key. Open up the arenas for, you know, voting polls is huge. And voting, I said, that's going to change, you know, that's the small step to change, you know, the bigger picture. Obviously, we want to figure out how we're going to monitor uh, the police chiefs so or how we're going to talk to them, trying to get them in front of us to have a conversation. Uh, obviously, figure out how we're going to incorporate or if we want to employ police in our arenas or working for us, you know, those type of things. These are conversations that we're having. I'm not saying they're set in stone, but trying to figure out how we can, uh, manipulate, not manipulate, but change things, small things, you know, for the better of the bigger picture. Hey, Danny, it's Bill. Uh, was there a point over the course of those conversations where you were on the side of, of ending the season? And in, when, when those conversations were being had, what was the argument for ending the season uh, as opposed to continuing to use the platform of the playoffs? Were we ever on the side of ending the season? Is that what you asked me? I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, we've, we all know that that would make a statement. We, we obviously are here. So we're all here. We all want to play. We know we have a chance to do something special, too. But we know there's things that are more important than that, than winning a championship. Um, because we're going, to be, so we're going to be black men forever. And that's not going to ever change. Uh, so if it comes down to winning a championship and doing something better for our people and for our communities, we're going to pick that first. And if we need to make a powerful statement with walking away and we felt that was the best thing to do, then we would do that. But we're still here now because we, this is probably the better way to do it, to keep our platform, for everybody to use this platform to speak up and, and, and not just be when we disperse because when we're divided, we're not as strong. Um, so there was no real, I mean, we considered it, but we, just, we considered all options of what would be the most powerful way to, to get change. Um, but so we're here now. We wanted to play. We've been here we, from day one. Um, if we didn't want to be here, we would have never came into the bubble. I don't know what the second part of your question was, but um, if you can repeat it, I'll answer it again. I'll answer it. Did you have a second Bill, part of the question? Is there a sec follow up question, hey, Bill? Hey, hey, hey Danny, uh, I, think, I, think, I think you were touching on it, but I was just curious. And I, I really think you answered it, but it was just how. Um, this ended up being the right path instead of the statement that you said would have been made by, by walking away, but I do well, think you answered it. There you go. I hope, I hope I did. If I didn't, let me know. Okay, All right. good. Thank you. Any questions here for anyone? Don't be shy as the time is now. There you go. Um, sorry, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. You sort of alluded to the, the meetings on Wednesday. When you finished on Wednesday night and went back to your room to sleep, did you think I mean, did you think the season was going to be over? To go to sleep? I don't think any of us slept after that night. <laughs> or I guess back just when, when the dust settled on Wednesday, 
Did you feel like the season was going to be over? Um, it wasn't short, man. Um, it was kind of up in the air, 50-50. Um, I, I thought I had a strong sense that it wouldn't be. I felt like most of our guys, a lot of our top guys, most teams wanted to be here, wanted to play. Um, but if we don't stand for nothing, you know what I'm saying, we won't get anything done. So we were willing to walk away from it if we had to. We come this far, we've come to where our families are almost here. To shut it down would have been silly, it would be silly, but it'd be silly for us to, you know what I'm saying, to not get some type of change, to get some type of action. So we're gonna stop playing and make a stand or a statement. Uh, we gotta get some type of change. And um, fortunately, you know, we got some good people behind us, some good support. And, you know, I guess people took this situation serious enough to be like, all right, let's try to get some things done because they are willing to, you know, throw it away. With the game that we love, the game that we love to play and do as a job, we're lucky enough to do as a job, uh, to give it all up, uh, you know, to just get some change in our country, in our communities. Um, but I said, we're here now because we've always been here. We always wanted to be here. We always wanted to play. Um, but I said, if it com comes down to it again, if we have to do it, we will because basketball is just a game and a lot of us would do it for free. All right, I have a few more questions. Um, Brad Turner. Hi, Danny. Uh, my question is about, you talked about voting. Mm -hmm. How important is it for NBA players, other athletes to register the vote so you can give that first step to those who think their vote doesn't matter, especially the younger and younger generation? Very important, man. That's the first thing we did before the meeting even ended. And I'm sure y'all were getting, so the, as fast as y'all were getting information, it was as fast as we were putting things out too, um, to our teams. I talked to um, our team assistants, our team publicists, whatever you want to call them, and let them know, look, we got to get everybody on our team registered. Because a lot of guys just got to California, not registered in California. We need everybody registered to vote. So to make sure they get on top of it, sending out the links, everything like that. Um, I'm, I was registered in Texas, so that's where I was at for seven, eight years. I went to Canada. A little different there. It's hard to register to vote there. So um, now back in California, I had to register and change you know, my address, my location. Um, and that's the situation for a lot of guys. And a lot, a lot of guys have been in California previous to this year. Um, so we made sure, first and foremost, that we got everybody. And even before we got to practice, you know, JR was like, making sure, is everybody here registered? Is everybody here um, registered to vote? And we're like, yeah, we got everything in place, our team. We we'll make sure every team um, gets in line and make sure that they put it out to their players and get them registered in their respective cities. And, and also said, we got the ads. Hopefully, we get some ads going during the games. We want ads, damn, every time out if we can, uh, of, of getting people out to vote. You know, because it's very important. So that's the first step in getting change. Okay, Chris. Uh, can, can you speak to how difficult or how difficult it might be to when you guys? It's a lot of players. Mm -hmm. it's Thirty owners. Yeah. And you know, a lot of guys are young and still maturing as adults. Like. How hard is it to try to, to gain common ground with so many guys, so many individuals, so many personalities when you guys are trying to come together? That's the hardest part, man, because there's no one solution that's going to cater to everyone. Um, but you want to do the best thing. You want to do what's right and what's going to you know, be best for the majority, of course. Um, when it came down to making a decision, what I'm saying, because um, if we decide to leave, that, that decision wouldn't have benefited everybody. There's guys that are still, you know, on their rookie deal. They're still trying to get a deal. There's some guys that are free agents or haven't made, you know, a chance to make their stamp in this league or make any money. Um, so we're making decisions um, pretty much for everybody, but that's not going to suit everybody's situation. Uh, but when it comes to relating and getting everybody on the same page, so you got guys of different statures, different classes, different ages. It's hard for them, different races. It's hard for some people to relate uh, and get some of them from different countries. Uh, trying to get them to understand you know, what's at hand, what's, you know, what's being made and history is being made right now and trying to make it for the, for the good, for the better. We come out of this on the good end of history. Um, you know, it takes time. It, it takes time to educate some of those guys, some of our teammates, some of our people. Um, but it takes time to work with people of different, I said, different ages, different classes uh, on different sides of the ball or different sides of the court, you know, trying to get the owners on board, certain owners, certain places, they, they're different people too. Um, so that, that's the, the toughest part about it. But I think when everybody sees you know, the magnitude of what's, what's going on, what's happening, and how you know, important this is to us, they're trying to you know, they make it a point to get on the same page. Everybody's trying to compromise to make sure that we get you know, some good things on this outcome, not just basketball, TV ratings, and money. You know, that's not what we're here for. 
Um, that's all great and all, but we want to get change. With, but they know what's important to us, and they want to so make it a point to compromise and make sure they come, come to meet some of our, uh, let's say demands, but some of the things that we want um, from out of this bubble. Mark Spears. Danny, do you uh, have anybody coming in? And also, do you think that it will lighten the moon in here once people start coming in? For sure. Um, I have my fiance coming in. I would love to have my dogs in here. Uh, but they're not allowing pets. But I think pets would definitely enlighten the mood. That would help anybody who has some type of say so. Get some dogs in here. But um, yeah, I have my fiance coming in, and I think that'll make things a lot easier for everybody. If they have their, their wives, girlfriends, uh, some of their families, their kids. Um, even though the, the situation is not exactly kid friendly, um, but just to have them around their, their, their people, their parents, their dads. You know what I'm saying? The kids being there. They'll be excited. They haven't seen their, their dads in two months. Um, so, yeah, that'll definitely lighten the mood. Um, but, I mean, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how, how well they feel in this environment as well. It's a different adjustment for them, too. Um, so I think it'll be good for a week or two. And then so we figure out um, how smoothly it, it still runs when um, if, guy, if guys stay longer than that. Gary? Gary, how much was uh, fatigue? overall being in here. I mean, Paul George said a couple of days ago he was, he was messing with his mental health and he had been in a bad place. How much did, did that have to do with it? And how much did the Jacob Blake thing kind of put guys over the top to even wonder whether you guys were even serving a positive purpose here? It has a lot to do with it, man, because mentally um, it's kind of like Groundhog Day in here, um, you know, with a mixture of some other movies I would mention, but I want to make it seem that bad. But... Uh, <laughs> The bubble is as good as your play, you know, and, and you have not many escapes or outside distractions. If you're not playing well, it's gonna, the wall's going to close in on you more and more. And trust me, I know exactly what Paul's going through. Um, you have nothing but to look at your phone or social media all day, and all they're doing is bullying you. You know, they're trying to get you to, to play well. So he was going through a rough stretch, and I'm sure the walls were closing in on him, and it was getting dark for him. A lot of guys, it's hard to adjust to this type of situation, this, this, the bubble. Um, and we hadn't, I felt like in my mind, as a group, we hadn't played great basketball. Even in game one, we played good, we won, but we hadn't played great basketball since we got here until the playoffs started, until maybe game two of the playoffs. And even then, it wasn't our greatest basketball, but that was the first time we had a good you know, win. And then the next game, we had some good rhythm going. So we just starting to feel good as a group the last couple of games since we've been here at the bubble. And a lot of us have embraced it, but you're not playing well as an individual or as a group. It'll get dark in here quick. Those walls are closing a lot sooner, a lot faster. There's no escape. You don't have your families here. You don't have your dogs. You don't have your kids. You can't just throw your phone. Your phone is right there. The only thing connecting you to the real world is social media. And if you're not playing well, social media is not going to be on your side.